One of the most common threats predation wise that we have here at the research ranch are coyotes. Now most people would say, oh yeah, coyotes, we need to kill every one of them if we want to protect our quail. We don't take quite as harsh a view towards coyotes. In fact, I've been accused of being a coyote advocate when I got my quail cap on, and I'll tell you why. You gotta appreciate that the whole predation equation is complex. One plus one don't always equal two. Two minus one doesn't always equal one. You've got many predators out there. You've got many species of prey. So again, the impact of coyotes on quail, we need to think of in several contexts. One is, how many times do coyotes consume quail? Well, they'll probably eat every quail they catch. And yet, we have a lot of coyotes and we have a lot of quail. So again, the, the arithmetic isn't always as simple as what you'd think. We've done several studies out here to look at various aspects of the coyotes as part of the quail equation. And I'd like to share the results with, of a couple of those studies with you. One of the things that, as you study predator ecology, one of the things you read about in the scientific literature is what's called the mesopredator release hypothesis. In common terms, that means when you take one predator, a larger predator, out of the system, you tend to open it up to smaller predators. In the literature, a classic example is the removal of the wolf from Yellowstone, and that allowed coyotes and other critters to increase. When they put the wolves back in Yellowstone, well, again, you begin to see pressure on some of those smaller predators. A good example here in Texas is the Texas Hill Country because it's been dominated for 150 years by sheep and goat management. Predator control was an integral part of that. When you take coyotes out of the system, as has largely been done over some of the plateau, you release other predators, those being raccoons, skunks, feral cats, to name a few. Here at the research ranch, we hardly ever see a skunk. We hardly ever see a feral cat. Our raccoons are in check, and we think that's because we have a high coyote population. We've done some studies where we put GPS collars on coyotes, and we monitored use of the habitat. At the same time, we had GPS collars on bobcats and on raccoons. And what we found was that the raccoons, the male raccoons, tend to use the roads and they go from quail feeder to quail feeder like it was an all-night cafeteria. The female raccoons and her kittens are restricted to the dense brush areas and the riparian areas. What restricts them to those areas? We believe the coyotes do. So most of the raccoons are unable to penetrate the upland areas of the ranch and that's where the quail are nesting. So we think by interference, that the, the coyotes are having an impact, and from our standpoint, a desirable impact on some of the smaller predators. Another research effort that we did several years ago was to look at the diet of the coyotes. What are coyotes eating here on a ranch, on a site that is managed specifically for Bob White quail? You'd think they'd be eating lots of quail. We looked at 1,028 coyote scats over a three year period, and only one of those scats one out of 1,028 contained any quail feathers. We thought that was pretty incredible. Now you gotta take that in context. Those were drought years. We didn't have a whole lot of quail here at the research ranch. But what we found in looking at those diets those coyotes were, that the coyotes were basically an omnivore. They eat both plant and animal material. Things like rodents were their number one prey item. Their number two prey item, guess, prickly pear on a year-round basis, not just the fruits. They were eating prickly pear and a lot of it. They'd also eat mesquite beans, they'd eat lote bush fruits on a seasonal basis. On down the line, and again way down the line were Bob Whites, we found that they eat five potential predators of quail. Those included snakes, raccoons, skunks, badgers, can you believe that? And feral hogs. Those five items were more common in the diet than were quail. So again, by consumption, the coyotes were eating some of the potential predators for quail. Now we're redoing that study as we speak because that was a series of La Nina years, drought years, very few quail. We're looking at it now in an El Nino time period when we are flush with quail and flush with cotton rats. So we'll see if our opinion of, of coyotes as a predator of quail decreases when both rodents and quail are popular. Stay tuned for that one.